Hi everyone, this is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here today on the Women's Way with a wonderful blogging course. This is a re-recorded <laughs> program because I forgot to press the record button when we did this live on Zoom. So this will be a, a quicker and little less interactive version of the same presentation but at least you'll get it. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, what we're going to talk about today is how you can grow your business with blogging and have a whole bunch of fun. So what is a blog? A blog's really like a journal. It's an online journal and most people, um, this is the like the textbook definition a blog is a regularly updated website or web page, typically one run by an individual or small group, that is written in an information, informal or conversational style. It's a really easy way for you to connect with your customers so that they know, like, and trust you. And if you've been listening to me for any length of time, I am always saying that same phrase over and over again because if you're authentically you and you're in service to help people uh, uh, solve a problem that they have then this is a great way for you to connect and um, create a long-term relationship with people so I recommend that you have a blog Oops. So why do you need a blog in 2019? Well, one word, it's Google. The opportunity to get on the first page of Google and to be seen for your category and for your keywords is, can make a difference between survival and not surviving. Google is the main main browser that everyone uses both on their phone and on their computer so you really even though there are other browsers Google's the leader in all of it Google also um, is one of the biggest competitors with Facebook and they and Facebook keep offering services back and forth to try to lure you to either one of their platforms and do advertising what we're talking about quite a bit in this presentation is ways to use your blog to make money that do not cost you advertising dollars. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Google, again, is the key place that we want to show up for in for our um, authority to be an influencer and to get our message out in the world. So if you are the top ranked on what the page, first page of Google, you get 33% of all clicks So for the keyword. So that's a third of all clicks. So you have to understand how important it is. Then the other thing I want to talk about that I hope um, you can see pretty well, hopefully the slides didn't move too much just then. Sorry about that. I don't know why they did. Um, I'm hoping that you'll get, again, I'll be repeating like a broken record a little bit, but if we want a relationship with our customers so that they know that we're the go-to person to help solve the problems that they have in their life or in their business, we want to have a relationship with them. And most relationships take time and they take an investment. You don't go on your first date and ask the person to get married. You invest the time and energy into getting to know each other. And a blog is a perfect way to do that without all the expense of the dinners and movies. <laughs> but you can speak your own truth and be authentic in your blog. So a quarter of all websites are blogs. So if you already knew that blogs were popular, now you can see um, not only is it important to be I have a keyword rich blog posting so that you show up on Google, 
Now you have to know that the reason so many websites are blogs is that their structure is PHP rather than HTML. And PHP, when it's in a table-like form, is an easier format for Google to, to call and to get data back for you. With that in mind, what you're going to know is that if you use the specific title with your keyword in it, tags with, in your posting, categories of how you post your blog post, and images that also have those keywords in it, you have a great chance of making um, of being highly visible for your keyword. But when you know that a quarter of all websites are blogs, you know that you want a blog too. Right now there's over 152 million blogs on the internet. That's a lot. So, it, which means that there's four times that. Um, th uh, and that, that's a third, or excuse me, a fourth of all the websites. So there's, you know, two third or three fourths more of other kinds of, of um, blog, excuse me, uh, items on the internet. But you really want to know that it's time to get a blog. So what you want to do, in my opinion, I do not suggest that you ever use free sites. I do not suggest that you use Wix or um, any of the free sites, including WordPress has a free site. I suggest that you get your own hosting account and you install WordPress on it. And you can put static pages. That's what most of my customers do. They'll have a website with maybe five to eight static pages and a blog. Okay, so um, that's so that you understand about WordPress. Only, not everyone has a blog for a long time period, so it's not too late for you to get in the game and start your blog right now. 34% of all bloggers right now have been blogging for less than a year. So if you have an area of expertise or an area of information that you, you're a specialist on, let's say you're a master gardener, and, but you are very interested in tomatoes. If you created a tomato blog, chances are the information that you would share would be so uniquely yours and could help people it'd be much faster to go to your blog than to go to YouTube and try to figure out which one of the YouTube videos to listen to. What you're ideally doing is you're doing what they call content curation. And content curation is where it's like the old um, Cliff Notes, if you remember those from high school or college. Cliff Notes are synopsis of what the book is about. And um, you could actually do that type of blogging. Let's use the example again of tomato, people that are experts at growing tomatoes. You could break it down into all different types of tomatoes, how you care for them, how you preserve them after you harvest, uh, what to do about the pests with tomatoes, all of that information where you could incorporate videos and and information, but using keywords so that you show up on Google as the most important result for the query. So just to let you know, this is one of my favorite blogs on the internet. Um, Seth Godin, who's one of my heroes, he's a marketing guru, and I get his email every day in my inbox because he has been writing very short posts on his blog every day for 21 years. Now I haven't been getting his emails for 21 years and I haven't followed it. I have every book he's ever written because I think he's brilliant. But I want you to know what he's talking about. It's just a discipline. He calls it streaks. 
So his wisdom, he, he just says you start with streaks require commitment at first. So it's a new habit. But when the commitment turns into a practice, then the practice turns into a habit. So that's how he's been able to accomplish sharing his wisdom daily for 21 years. But you, the commitment we're talking about today doesn't mean you have to do it for 21 years. But, you know, give yourself six months and say you'll do it. Even if you posted just for six months on your website with, with keywords, that data would still show up on the front page of Google for probably several years until someone else came out and did um, similar similar information, shared similar information. So it's it's evergreen. And um, so don't be intimidated. Um, I, I was just showing that Seth is brilliant and was way ahead of the curve compared to the rest of us. So 77% of internet users read blogs regularly. So instead of going to get your magazine or read the newspaper, a lot of people follow their favorite person on a blog. And the ideal reading time for a blog post is seven minutes. So seven minutes equates to approximately 1,600 words. So that's the ideal blog post length, but you don't have to have it for that long. You could include other images, infographics, and videos to also have it for seven minutes that, that would also fill the need for information in snippets for your customer and still, and still get the job done. So the idea also here again is I'm a big video enthusiast. I really think video is um, mandatory in your bag of tricks anymore for marketing and communication. There are so many people that are visual learners and they would much rather watch a video than read a five page document. So just so you know, video is, the, the statistics are, are agreeing with my supposition. It, the statistics say that 72% of readers would rather watch a video than read text. And a video blog is called a vlog, V-L-O-G. Now, a vlog can still also have text with it. One of the fun ways to use a video blog is to do a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live. Then bring it down because you can, you can download it afterwards. Get it transcribed on one of the, the inexpensive transcription sites on the internet, and I can recommend some if you'd like. And then post it on your blog. Either put it up on YouTube if it was a Facebook video, and then use the text, the transcribed text, in your blog post. So you have both something someone can read, which might, might help ground the information better for some people, um, as well as a video, which will show up on, on YouTube and show up on Google faster. So, um, and we did this with one of our customers who really isn't a writer. Um, she, she would prefer to do videos. And we did blog, vlogs um, on every single topic and then transcribed them. And um, she got great traffic. It really helped her build her business. So have any of you heard of Gary Vanderchuk? Well, Vandy, Gary Vanderchuk is the perfect example of a vlogger. <laughs> he actually is another marketing genius that it would be great for you to know about if you're not familiar with his work. Gary Vanderchuk was at an event that I got to be at last year in October in LA called Vid Summit. He was the keynote speaker. And he has done so well that he gave every participant at the event a free pair of leather sneakers. <laughs> there was 1,500 of us there. Gary is a, 
New Yorker. His parents were in the wine business and he started to help his parents and he figured out the most authentic and powerful ways to market their business and then was so successful that he started his own marketing company. And he does blogs, vlogs all the time. Now, if you look on this, this uh, image right now, you'll see it says podcast, blog, events, contact, my story. So he uses quite a bit and repurposes his videos, just like I was talking about that you can get it transcribed. You can also pull out the audio out of an audio video file because they come in two tracks and repurpose that into a podcast by putting an opening and a closing on it. So when you start to think about this, it's it, it one subject, one item, like a video, could get you five pieces of content. And um, that I want to encourage you to do, but I could easily tell you more about that some other time. Anyway, the companies that are publishing over 16 blog posts per month get three and a half times more traffic than those who post four or less. That may seem like a lot for you right now, so I don't want to over commit you, but I want you to know that if you can do more, you will receive more. Because this is, again, people are using their phones, they're on the bus, they're on the train, they're maybe in a carpool, they're waiting um, in line at a restaurant, and they're reading blog posts, they're watching YouTubes, they're, they're watching, it's just like a magazine article to them. And so if you consistently post, you'll get followers just like a magazine would. So how does this help your business? This whole presentation is about how you can profit. Well, traffic um, on your website can get you cash. It can get you a relationship with your customer and it can make the reader aware of all the other products and services that you can offer them and support them with. It can grow your email list because if you have a free gift and that is positioned on the right hand side of your blog post, most blog blogging software in WordPress will be two column where the one column it's sort of like Facebook, if you think about it, it's the news feed, and then on the right-hand side is ads. That's what most people do with their blogs as well. So you can grow your email list by offering a free, free recording, a free PDF, some sort of free gift that they sign up with their email, and, um, and then you've grown your list. And the money is in the list. Even though people are saying it's harder to get people to open the emails, the money is still in the list. Um, as far as uh, the way that you can also build your business with this, it creates relationships. Now, a lot of people that are in coaching and service providing businesses, they have to create a strong relationship with their customer or else someone else will. So the idea is that the blog um, gets people an idea of how you speak. If you do video, they'll hear your voice and hear the tonality and tonality and hear the cadence, you know, the the pace that you speak at. But um, but if you don't do video, a blog post can do the same. If you're from Texas, you can put sign off on a regular way and say bye, y'all. Um, you know, it, there's all sorts of ways you can personalize it so that it's got your signature. Just like in the original, when you think about um, other other personalities, a lot of times they had their closing comments and they use the same anchor every time. That's what you can do on a blog. The other thing that people can do is they can you, they can sell space on that right hand side of the blog posting for advertisers. And if you have other 
businesses that would love to market to your audience, this can be very profitable. Um, I, I know for a fact that a lot of the conscious business um, community uses this very well. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time seeing an ad multiple times or um, so you can buy banner ads on the top usually of a website or on the alongside the right hand side. So sometimes you have to see it several times before people will act to it on it. But um, that's a way that you can rent the space to your to a potential um, vendor that's aligned with you and make some regular income. Certainly pay for having the hosting and any other expenses you have with the blog. So how do you make all the content? Because that's really the key is this is edutainment. It's educating entertainment. So my recommendation is that you use a customer avatar. The customer avatar is a tool that we use in my Mindful Marketing Magnetism class, and I highly recommend that you consider doing this, where you actually create a persona for the, your ideal customer. This persona would include their name, their age, um, possibly their education, but the most important part of the avatar information that we need for our work is what do they need? What are their challenges? How can you support their dreams? What are their goals? What, uh, what um, are their struggles? And if you feel that you have a solution to those problems, this is a way that you can connect on a very, very high level. When people see you as a solution to their problem, they follow you and they stay loyal. And in this digital world, that's really, really important. So um, you want to be the authority on whatever your subject matter is, but you also want to serve them in a profound way so that their interaction with you causes a positive change. And, and uh, whether it's healing them from a fear and emotion, helping them in a more constructive, time-saving way, um, steering them right where they might be steered incorrectly if they went to someone else and might take advantage of them. So all of these things, you will know that if you have done the work to figure out who your customer avatar is for this audience. And again, if this is something that you need more information about, please let me know because um, I'm, I'm kind of a, um, a, I'm very, very adamant about the need for this for almost any project you do. The other thing you can do that helps you build your blog and takes a little bit of the burden off of you having to create all those posts is you can ask other people to be guest bloggers or you can be a guest blogger on a more popular blog. What a lot of those blog blogs that are popular, so let's say I'm in the um, conscious business environment. So I might be looking for a spiritual blog or um, something that's aligned with my values. And usually what you can do is once you go to that blog, you can look at their about page or their contact page and find out if they'll allow you to be a guest blogger. The credibility for that is huge. If you think about, um, you know, when people say they've been in Forbes for business or Wall Street Journal or Inc. or any of the, the large business uh, media outlets, CNN, any of the channel, the TV channel stations, ABC, NBC, CBS. Um, those once you can say you've been featured on it, or that you're a blogger on it, or your articles have gotten on these these uh, sites, that elevates your credibility tremendously. So there's two things for guest blogging. One, you may want to be 
a blogger yourself or and or you may want to ask people to be a guest blogger on yours. Now to find these guest blogging opportunities, one of the best ways to do it is to take a keyword. So in my case, it might be conscious business. And um, I would conscious business and I would submit, I would keep, just put this in the query bar in Google, submit a guest post, guest post, guest post by, accepting guest post, and guest post guidelines. Now, the one thing that's wonderful is once you do figure out what everyone else's guest post guidelines are, you can use that for your own guidelines when you have guests post on your site. So this could be helpful in many ways. But but you can see that there's lots of people that um, uh, are wanting to, to co-create this together. And this is a great opportunity for you to get visible in a different marketplace and um, and also them to to get a break and let you fill some of the content on their blog. As long as it's aligned, it's perfect. So when, when you're doing content for your own blog, you want to support your clients um, with the very best information you can. And again, if you go back to that discussion about the avatar, you have already decided and deciphered what what constraints and challenges that your ideal customer has. And if you want to be the solution to those problems or those challenges, then this your blog post can be all of that. You can do things, um, you can solve your client's problems or frustrations. You can use YouTube videos, either your own or other people's, if you agree with what other people are saying and that you feel that it'll be helpful. And you should use lots of images when you, um, when you do your blog posts. So if you do uh, use images in your blog posts, I wanted to share all of these wonderful free photo sites that you might not know about that allow you to use those photos without you having to go take them yourself or pay a lot of money to the expensive photo sites. Now, if you're in business and you're doing, um, I just did a website for an IT company, uh, uh, a video conferencing company, and the, um, we did have to buy images. There just wasn't any way around it. Either that or we would have had to hire a photographer and take our own. But if you're doing more um, soft skills or um, emotional support, uh, coaching, um, consulting, a, a lot of these free sites will have uh, people photos, nature photos, science photos, um, with with um, that that may be just perfect for you. So I hope I've stayed on this slide long enough for you to be able to to copy some of these. Um, want you to know that Buzz Sumo found that blog articles with an image once every 75 to 100 words receive double the social media shares as articles with fewer images. In my experience, there is a uh, opportunity with each one of your blog posts to have a specific image that is highlighted and um, and tagged. So so here's great resources for those blog posts that that may make all the difference. You won't have to work so hard to find the the images. So the other ways to add visual content to your blog posts is to embed social media posts. Um, a lot of times you'll find some posts, especially if you're consistent with, with um, being an expert in your field and having interests that are similar to, to um, your blog. 
subject matter. Um, so a lot of times you can find, you know, you'll go, oh, that's just perfect. I'll grab that image or I'll grab the article they were talking about. And you can refer it and use that in your posts as well. Uh, you can use GIFs. GIFs are the images that have movement in them now. Um, sometimes they're they're like quick little videos, only there's no sound to them usually. And um, that's something that can add a lot of fun movement and um, sort of eye candy to your blog posts. Uh, photos, as we've said before. And then the other thing that I'm playing around with a lot lately is quote graphics. Uh, quote graphics can be used on social media. They can be used, you can make short videos with them. Um, there's lots of ways to use quote graphics by putting music behind it, or you could speak them. And um, that's a way, uh, lots of people do a daily blog that's almost like a daily inspiration. And um, these quote graphics would be great for that. If you're selling journals or card decks, a lot of times those quote graphics are similar um, inspirations. So that's another way to use them. So the other thing that um, I'm finding over and over again is that people are using what they call infographics. And this is an infographic. It can be made in, in uh, PowerPoint as well as made in other um, expensive softwares. I usually use Photoshop or Illustrator to do mine, but um, people do use PowerPoint, and PowerPoint is what I'm doing this presentation on, and it is, um, it's in the, the Microsoft Office suite. So it's one way for you to do it in low-cost way. <clears throat> These infographics usually tell a story. It's a, kind of a visual, visual article. And um, a lot of times, if you're doing statistics like this, 51%, 49%, um, the visual really helps the retention level. Because if I just spit out a bunch of percentages right now, and you have nothing to look at, there's, it's hard to anchor the information. But with, with infographics, that's um, one thing. And, and people share them a lot. So that could help your blog posts go viral. The other thing that people um, use is screenshots. So one of the one of the my favorite ways of doing training is like an over the shoulder training where where I show you live doing something using this same software I'm recording this this program with right now. It's Camtasia. It's by TechSmith. And uh, screenshots are another kind of over your shoulder way where somebody can see what you see and they can make sure they've done it right. <laughs> so if you have a blog post where you have a paragraph, then a screenshot, then the explanation, then the next what to do next part of it, um, you'll find that that's very, very helpful. Um, visual content, again, we talked about vlogs, video. I will probably always talk about video because I made four or five videos today. So I, I think video, if you aren't doing it now, uh, I want to encourage you to start considering doing it. And it's not that scary, you guys. It's okay. <laughs> then, then the other thing is testimonials or case studies. A lot of times it's impossible for you to really brag about what you do. If you do, it just sounds terrible. It's so much better to have someone else um, brag about you and talk about the results you got for them and um, inspire someone because chances are your ideal customer is the same or very similar personality to the person who gave the testimonial. Case studies, on the other hand, are great for small businesses that can show the, the before situation and then the after situation. And that, that, that support and that uh, storyline of the, here, I started here, I ended here, and it's a happy ending kind of ending. Um, with your case study, that again is a is a sales tool 
that is so powerful. You, that's why you'll see when if you go online, there are all the big companies, Amazon, um, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Microsoft, Adobe. I, I, I'll, I could go on and on and on. But case studies, IBM, um, they're everywhere. And there's a reason. It's, it's really a powerful way for you to not have to brag but for you to share your wins and how you can help your customer. The other thing that we use anytime we can is a thing called SlideShare. So SlideShare originally, it's like a directory for presentations like this. Usually it's in, it, you make a PDF of your PowerPoint and SlideShare was acquired by LinkedIn. So it is a wonderful link to have back to your blog. So if you are either putting a SlideShare up and you then use that SlideShare link back on your blog post or vice versa, you refer on your blog post to somebody else's SlideShare, those links back and forth are very, very good in the eyes of Google because they're, they're Number one, it's multimedia. Number two, that slide share is like a big directory. And um, if you show up in a big directory, just like Amazon as a bestseller, um, that has so much more value in Google and um, because of all the entries. And when you can get to the top of the list for those keywords, um, you win. You win. So if you use SlideShare, you can get traffic, you can rank better on Google, you can grow your followers because if they're on SlideShare, they're looking for a solution to a problem, just like on YouTube. So if, you're, if your keywords are correct and they match up and they can find you on SlideShare, you will benefit. They will come to your site and, and you'll see that blog post just blow up. Um, it builds your brand. It can build your email subscribers again. Um, you can create your own uses. And then again, you can embed the slide share on your blog. So we've talked about getting free photos and free images. But if, if you need help learning how to do the graphic side of it, number one, you might have to crop the image or you may need to have text with the image. Um, these are, the Canva is a free site that you can go on and upload your images and use their tools to add text or edit the size of your image. It's quite handy. They have templates and all sorts of things. I think I've done a presentation on this before, so um, we could look for that if you need, if you have more questions about Canva. But if not, um, I think it's pretty intuitive. I, I think you would have fun doing it. Then the other ones I wanted you to see is, again, because I think video is so important. Uh, for free videos, you can go to Animoto. And Animoto will have their logo at the very end slide. But that won't really uh, reduce the quality or the messaging that your video can have. And um, you could try that. It's really fun. And it's not very intimidating. So you could start with Animoto. Then um, Microsoft PowerPoint, if you're on a version that is a newer version, I think from 2012 on in PowerPoint, you can render your videos as a, excuse me, you can render your PowerPoint presentation as a video. And you can also add voiceover like what I'm doing here. I'm particularly, I'm particularly fond of Camtasia, so I'm using Camtasia here. But um, it's just because I know how to use it and I've been using it for 20 years. But, but PowerPoint is no extra cost and Camtasia is. So um, I would start with PowerPoint and see how you do first. So now we're going to see about how to make your blog a success story. So I want you to see some other success stories. So 
I don't know if you've ever heard of Ariana Huffington, but I was lucky enough to get to hear her speak at a event at the Conference for World Affairs probably 20 years ago, close to 20 years ago at CU. And she started this, this blog and it became a newspaper. It was when, this was when the internet was pretty young. She started um, in 2005. I know I did my first website in 1995, so, so she was pretty cutting edge doing a site like Huffington Post back then. But she she used it as a way to tell the truth and and tell her side of the story. It's not a commercial it now is a commercial endeavor, but it wasn't then. Huffington Post um, has been bought out and it's now called Huff Post and it earns an estimated 14 million dollars per month. So get started now on your, on your blog and maybe in, in a few years you'll be making thousands and thousands of dollars per month because people want to reach the target market that you're adding value to, that you're entertaining with your blog posts and, and they may not have the time but they have the money to invest to get visible on your blog. I know this works. I've seen it over and over and over again. So I, I want to, to let you know that this, um, this model really works. Now another one I wanted you to see is this gentleman named Mark Manson. And uh, I just saw his book in the airport. It was really funny that, that I hadn't seen it before, but I just did. So his, his books have sold over 6 million copies. He started blogging back in 2009, and by 2016, his blog had 2 million visitors each month. His first self-help book, published in 2011, sold 15,000 copies in its first three years. His second book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a You-Know-What, Debuted, deb, debuted at number six on the New York Times bestseller list in 2016. It continues to be one of the biggest sellers on Amazon and has brought, bought over six million times. That's amazing. So what you need to know is by him doing using his blog as a way to reach people, he's created a, a market that he can publish book after book after book and still have an audience. Most authors don't understand this. Most authors, when we publish books for people, we ask them to have a website um, resources tab in the book. So that you start to talk about an item and then you suggest they go to the website to pull down a PDF or to get more resources on that information and that way you can collect their emails. Well he's done the same thing. So every book he does from now on he's already got a hungry audience for it. The other thing to let you know that there are software programs that will allow you that if you actually write your book in your blog which I've seen done over and over again, that can start and create a huge audience. And there is software programs that will allow you to pull off your content from your blogs and rearrange it so that you can actually publish it as a book. And there's not that much work to do because it's already in your voice and it's already published information. The there are lots of examples of this, and I'm, I don't remember the guy's name, but there was a gentleman that wrote, it was a suspense blog, um, and he wrote every day for, I think, four or five years, and then turned it into a book, and he, he was worried that people wouldn't buy the book because they had already read everything for free. But what happened was he sold millions of copies of the book because they, people still like holding a book and wanting it. And, and it was arranged different from off the blog. 
So, so don't be intimidated about putting some of your best stuff up on your blog or using your blog as a way to um, get your book ready, get, start writing your book. What I want to offer you today is a free report to help you with your blogging. I'm, I'm hoping that this has inspired you a lot and that you'll be, be excited enough about blogging to want to go download this free, this free report and start blogging for yourself. This um, site is my website. It's masonworksmarketing.com backslash presents backslash blog. And um, it's business hacks to grow your list with blogging. And again, the money is in the list. The relationship that you can build is in the list. And how you can help serve and support people is all in that list. And the best, fastest way to do it is a blog. So that's the end of my presentation. Here is contact information for both Trina Cooper and myself. If we can be of service in any way to help you as you grow your business and you build um, and create impact with love in the marketplace, please let us know. We both are very dedicated to helping you be the best you can and to serve your, your audience and uh, be a great problem solver and influencer for them. It's time. So hopefully this will help you um, be more authentic and enjoy your interactions with the people in your business. And uh, again, please let me know if I can help you. And please don't forget to get your free report. Um, and let me know if, if you have any questions. Thank you.